everyone, welcome back to another episode of Hallmark Happenings. I am your host, Betsy, and today I am talking with Nancy Nagel, the author of Sand Dollar Cove. As you probably know, Sand Dollar Cove has been turned into a Hallmark Channel movie, airing Saturday, June 26th. It stars Chad Michael Murray and Ali Mashaka. I am talking with Nancy all about the book being turned into a movie, her story inspiration, and how she feels about Chad and Allie taking on the roles of Brody and Ellie in the movie. She's going to reveal if she has even seen the movie. Also, did you know she is no stranger to Hallmark Channel? We are going to get to all of that in just a moment. Don't forget to follow me on all of my social media accounts at Hallmark Happenings Podcast or on Twitter at Podcast Hallmark. I also want to thank everyone who joined me for live tweeting during her pen pal last week. Oh, speaking of her pen pal, you're like, wait, wait, Betsy, where is the recap for her pen pal? Don't you worry. The recap episode is coming very soon and it is going to feature not one, but two of the actors from the movie. Be on the lookout for the recap episode and interviews dropping later this week. And of course, you know, I'm going to update you on everything going on in the Hallmark Channel universe. So here is what is happening at Hallmark. It was just announced this past week that country singer Lauren Elena will be starring in a Hallmark Channel movie. And guess who was playing her love interest? Tyler Hines. Oh, all the Heinies out there have to love this news because we all love a good Tyler Hines Hallmark movie. This movie is called Roadhouse Romance and it will be kicking off the Fall Harvest lineup starting in September. We're going to get all the, the fall foliage pumpkin vibes going on. This one airs September 11th, so be sure to set your DVRs and record this one. I'll give you a little uh, summary of the storyline. Lauren Elena will be playing Lieutenant Callie Jackson. She returns home after a military tour, expecting everything to pick up right where she left it. To her dismay, her late grandfather's barbecue is struggling, and her high school sweetheart has moved on. She has a run-in with Luke, played by Tyler Hines, a TV director passing through town who teaches her that sometimes it's best to look forward instead of looking back. There's a promo image of the two of them dancing. I don't know if anyone is aware of this, but Lauren Elena was on Dancing with the Stars, so maybe she will put her dancing skills to the test on the screen. She was actually hilarious on Dancing with the Stars, so hopefully we see some of that humor shine through in this movie. And don't forget, this airs September 11th. And now it is time to get to the interview with Nancy Nagel, author of Sand Dollar Cove. So please give a very warm welcome to today's guest, Nancy Nagel. Hi, Nancy. Thank you so hey. much for being part of the show. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. <laughs> well, I am very excited to have you. We all know that your book has been turned into a movie, Sand Dollar Cove, and it is the last movie of the summer nights lineup, which I think they sometimes save the best for last. So I think that is definitely the case with this. I hope so. Oh gosh. I am so excited about Sand Dollar Cove. You know, it's just a beautiful beach book and, you know, full of family and community kind of stuff. So I think people are going to fall in love with Sand Dollar Cove. <laughs> oh, I'm sure they will. Everyone's searching the trailers yes. because there's some big cast in it. First off, why don't we start for maybe people who have yet to see the trailer? Can you tell us about the premise, the storyline of Sand Dollar Cove? Yeah, I can. You know, it's a, a small beach town. And um, originally in the book, it was in North Carolina. But in the movie, it's in Connecticut because you can't fake North Carolina. <laughs> So it is actually set in Sand Dollar Cove, Connecticut in the movie. And um, uh, Ellie is a developer and she has come to Sand Dollar Cove to scout a resort location. And um, while she's there, she runs into the guy who owns the pier, who also owns the bait and tackle shop. And of course, he doesn't want to let go of the pier and he doesn't want it to get torn down. So, uh, so there's definitely some conflict between the two, but in the end, you know, they, they have to come together and come up with a good solution. So I'm really excited. You know, it's, it's a little bit of a flip-flop from the book. In the book, 
um, Ellie is not the developer. She is the one who's coming home to her grandmother's house to save the pier. And Brody is the one that was trying to set up the mega superstore. So they've done a little flip flop in the movie, which is kind of exciting. Uh, it's just a wonderful town and the people are still just as lovable. Uh, so I think readers are going to love being able to have the first story and then come into this movie and, and see it for themselves. You know, how it would have been if it was flip flopped. <laughs> That's true. It's always fun to read the book first and then kind of make the comparisons after you have seen the movie. Yes. I am curious, like, what were your thoughts? Because you are no stranger to Hallmark Channel. You also wrote Secret Ingredient, which was made into a Hallmark movie. But what were your thoughts when they said, we want to make Sand Dollar Cove into a Hallmark movie? Oh, I'm so excited. So that's my fourth um, original novel that has been made into a movie. I also had Christmas Joy and Hope at Christmas back in 2018, I think it was, um, and then 2020 for The Secret Ingredient. Sand Dollar Cove is extra special to me. Um, I wrote that book. It came out in um, 2015, and originally I had just written that story as part of an anthology to raise money for juvenile diabetes research, so, uh, the association there, um, with Brenda Novak. We had created this anthology called Sweet Talk, to raise money for that wonderful cause. And um, I never really anticipated it being a standalone book. So uh, it was really well received and I went ahead and stuck it out there for the world to see. And it's just, you know, found so many readers. And when Hallmark said they wanted to pick it up and option it, and I believe that was in 2019 when they optioned this, I was so excited because this is just the, the sweetest book. I mean, anybody can read it from, you know, teenage to grandmas, which is always super special to me because I always loved reading books that my mom had read. And um, for it to become a movie was just super special. <laughs> it's had a charmed life. <laughs> I love that. Hallmark definitely, I guess they, they see something in a book that just has that special quality they think would translate well to the screen. And I think just from the trailer, it looks like a very sweet film. And I love the beach side story it all just looks like a really great movie and a great book I, I'm sure everyone should too. definitely pick it up yes definitely and I think the movie um is probably going to be super extra special um and probably some this is something that good that'll come out of you know that the, the Miss the mysterious pandemic that we've had over the past year. But, um, you know, Sand Dollar Cove got pushed last year because of that. You know, they couldn't get out and film and do all that stuff. So there was that much more time to invest in the script and, you know, what was going to happen. And a lot of the, um, I think the flip flops of the roles is going to be kind of fun because it's not um, as traditional as a lot of the Hallmark movies. So I think it's going to make it um, a little more fresh too in the, the viewer's eyes. I like that kind of changing it up a bit. And then I'm curious because it varies from project to project. How much creative input did you get in the making of this movie? Did you get any at all? Or were they like, we need your opinion, Nancy? You know what? I, I hope someday they say, oh, we need your opinion, Nancy. But I will tell you that I haven't had any creative input on any of the movies. Um, and I, I'm kind of okay with that. It's such a different animal. You know, writing a novel um, is completely different from writing a screenplay where everything is very visual and some things that work great in the book just don't work in a movie and you know Hallmark has the best of the best in every role and so I, I always trust that they're going to come out with a beautiful heartwarming story and they've never let me down <laughs> so they don't really need me but there's there are a few times where you know I watch the movie and I'm like oh wow if they'd only pulled in this one little piece of the story you know into the movie it would have been even better <laughs> So someday I hope they do ask me to at least, uh, you know, kind of provide a little bit of input. So that would be a lot of fun. Oh, I hope so. I'm sure you have a lot to say and things you could contribute to it. And I guess the, obviously I was going to ask you if you had any say in the casting process, but I think you just answered that. Did you have anyone maybe in mind for the roles of Brody and Ellie when they announced that they would be making this into a movie? Did you have like a dream cast? <laughs> it is absolutely a dream cast and I could not be more excited. Excited. Uh, Chad Michael Murray is just, yeah, oh, it's so amazing. <laughs> and Allie is just beautiful. I think they make a really pretty couple, you know, in the trailer. There seems to be a good chemistry. So I can't wait to see the movie and see how their spark is on screen. <laughs> yes, definitely. And they are both really 
big actors for Hallmark Channel to get to be in their movies. They're not just like local Canadian actors. These are legitimate like Hollywood A-listers, um, especially Chad Michael Murray. He's just the biggest. And then Allie was huge and Allie and AJ, as I'm sure you've already, you've learned yes. from her getting cast. So that's, that's really big for this movie and for yes. your book. Yeah. Yeah, it really is. It's exciting. And of course, I mean, I think I've had uh, great luck in the casting on all the movies. I mean, Erin Cahill in A Secret Ingredient, I absolutely adore. I just think she's amazing. And um, Brendan is just so handsome. All of them are handsome. I mean, how many Hallmark hunks could there be? <laughs> An infinite <laughs> but, amount. <laughs> um, I know, I know. I've had, you know, Daniel Panabaker was in Christmas Joy, Ryan KV and Hope at Christmas. I mean, I have just been so lucky to have, you know, wonderful actors with great uh, charisma. <laughs> I wish I could just I'll have them all come over for lunch one day. <laughs> oh, you could at least have a Zoom meeting. You could at least have a, like, a little re reunion of all these actors from your books to movies. That would be fun. I know. Wouldn't that be fun? I know, especially because this year I wasn't able to go on set. So I didn't get to meet the actors, um, which I would normally get to do. So uh, yeah, I would love to meet them someday. Hopefully there'll be some kind of Hallmark gathering and I'll get to say hello to them. And thank you. <laughs> Oh yeah, definitely. So you did get to visit the sets of the other three books that were made into movies for Hallmark? Yes, I've been able to visit the sets previously. And oh gosh, the first time I ever went on set, I think I cried about 80% of the time I was there. It was just so beautiful. And you know, the people are so wonderful, you know, from every aspect of Crown Media and Hallmark and Hallmark Publishing, the people are so genuine and kind and truly like a family. Um, and when I went on the Home and Family show, I mean, I really felt like part of the family there and I was just a visitor, you know, um, and just, you know, it's, I, I like to tell people that when I'm on set, it feels like almost like a choreography because there are so many people. I had no idea it took that many people to, to make a movie, but you know, the set people and the catering and the directors and the actors and the the stand-in actors and all those and they're moving around so quickly and especially as they change scenes that it's amazing that they can do it so quickly and I would love someday to know how many feet of extension cords there are because <laughs> there is so much stuff wired up all over the place <laughs> It's very, very interesting. And, you know, I, I was, uh, I don't know if it was the good fortune or the bad fortune, but on Hope at Christmas, we had started really early in the morning and then I left and got dinner and stuff like that. I came back, they were still filming and they filmed late into the night and still the cast, the crew, everybody was so up and warm and kind still after all those hours of work. So i uh, just, you know, the cast and the, the businesses are just like the movies. <laughs> heartwarming. I'm so glad you got the opportunity. Um, I'm sure you will again in the future to get to see like in person, your, your idea, your, your baby of a book to like be taken over by this, this huge network. I mean, it's kind of a surreal experience. I've been, it is. Oh gosh. And I have a couple of books and I'm really hoping that they're still going to pick up. <laughs> well, you have a good track record so far. <laughs> I would love to go back to more of the storyline. Where did you get your inspiration for Sand Dollar Co? Because it's, it really seems like just such a sweet, sweet premise. I just love it. Where did these characters and everything come from? Well, you know, I grew up on the beach. I grew up in Virginia Beach, Virginia. But when you live in a tourist town, you go somewhere else because the tourists invade your town. So during the winter, I loved being in Virginia Beach. But in the summer, I always spent my summers on the Outer Banks. Nags Head, Kitty Hawk, Kill Devil's Hills. That stretch of beach was, you know, like home for us. And um, so when I created Sand Dollar Cove, it in my mind was down in that area of the beach. And it just kind of tucked it in, in between at the inlet. And um, I had to, the, the invitation to write for that diabetes um, foundation uh, fundraiser was to write like this little short novella. Well, I had never written a short novella. All my books are like 88,000, 90,000 words. And so I was supposed to write a 20,000 word novella and I ended up with like 40,000 words. <laughs> But I was trying to write something short and succinct. And for me, the beach was always so 
fun and peaceful. And I mean, it just kind of gets all your best moods in one place. And so that's why I chose the setting there. And I, I knew it so well. And then just the idea of being able to go and dip your toes in and just oh, seeing all those sand dollars and, um, you know, the community coming together to do things. It made it a very easy um, love story to create. Oh, I love that. So you kind of drew off your own personal experience. So getting to live beachside. And I, I know that sand dollars have like a special, unique, like meaning, like on the front and the back. And like, if you break them open or something, there's like this whole neat little story. If the listeners don't know about this, you should look it up. It's very interesting. Does that show up at all in the book or in the movie? Uh, you know, Nana in the, in the book, and I, cause I haven't seen the movie yet, so I don't know, but in the book, Nana paints sand dollars and, um, you know, she's just a, a wonderful artist and she's been known for painting these sand dollars. And so it does come up. The story of that does come up in the book. I have no idea if it'll be in the movie. It'll be exciting to see. <laughs> yes. I was actually just about to ask you if you've had the opportunity to watch the movie, but you are <laughs> going to see it, I guess on the, the 26th, like the rest of us. <laughs> I guess so. Yeah. I mean, I haven't seen, I haven't gotten a copy yet and I know that they're still kind of finalizing a lot of different things in the movie. So I'm thinking I'm probably going to see it the same time we all do. And in a way I'm, I'm excited about that. <laughs> well, I'm sure you've at least seen the trailer. At least you've seen that. And oh. what were you thinking? Like the very first time you saw the little, um, it's, it's not very long. It's like 30 seconds or a minute. I think what were your initial thoughts? I loved it, especially, you know, the, the scene like with the Ferris wheel and things like that. I just, I loved um, just how cozy it felt because that really is how Sand Dollar Cove is in the book. And of course, you know, I, I was a little worried because, you know, they're moving it all the way up the North Coast. I knew it was going to look really different than what I had dreamed of Sand Dollar Cove being. Um, so I really didn't know what to expect. So when I first saw that trailer, you know, of course the stars are amazing anyway, but the settings were just gorgeous, you know, and I love the bait and tackle shop is absolutely adorable. Like I wish I'd written that. <laughs> so <laughs> I think that people are going to love it too. And you know, there's, it's funny because um, even though the story is a little flip-flopped and different than the book, there's, there's still those heartwarming things like the bait and tackle shop is kind of small and quaint and it's very connected to the town and it feels small town. Well, there were things in the book that were very similar that would give you that same feeling. And for instance, at Ellie, um, her grandparents had had, you know, the, the, the pier and in the book, Ellie had a little popsicle stand when she was young and she raised money towards college with this popsicle stand up on the pier every year. And so when she went off to college, she ended up allowing other people that were trying to raise money for college come in and run the stand every year. And so it's still being run by different people every single year to raise money for their uh, college education. And I just love that because it was quaint and small town and gives you that good feeling. And I felt like the bait and tackle shop kind of picked up that piece of the story. So um, I think the feelings that people get, whether they will, when they read the book and when they watch the movie are going to be really similar. They're different, but they're, they're going to feel the same way. Oh, I, I can't wait to see that. I love anything that's like quaint and charming. And if someone has yet to read the book, but they want to get it before the movie airs and like totally fly through it, can they get it on Amazon? Do you know like a link that I can direct people to so they can buy it? Yeah, they can grab it right off at Amazon in paperback or in Kindle format. And it's a quick read. So, you know, you could snuggle down this weekend and read it and then be ready for the movie and to revisit Sand Dollar Cove. <laughs> Yes, absolutely. I hope everyone does that. And will you have like a watch party with your family and friends? Well, I had planned to um, have one that was here at the house and on Facebook. However, I am in Facebook jail. So <laughs> I got a, went to get on Facebook uh, Saturday night. And for some reason they were like, we need to verify who you are and that you're not impostering someone. And so I sent all my stuff and I'm still in Facebook jail. My accounts are disabled. I have no idea when or if that's going to be corrected. So I'll just be popping some things on my uh, website, which is always up and running. Cause I run that <laughs> and, um, we'll be watching from home here with some friends. <laughs> Well, I hope that gets resolved very quickly. That is so weird. I don't know why they do that. I know, I know. So I, I don't know how I'm going to resolve that since it's so new and I, I thought it would be resolved by now. I haven't come up with another uh, way to handle it, but you know, June 26th is around the corner and I'm, I'm still trying to get creative. <laughs> well, you have some time stuff can get fixed quickly. So hopefully that happens. Um, and I, I want to also talk about the like initial time you first started working with Hallmark channel. Did they just approach you because they wanted to option 
a book or did you kind of have them on your radar as a possibility? I mean, did you even ever plan on your books being you know, turned into movies? Well, you know, I, when I got my agent, one of the things I told her was that I would love to have a Hallmark movie. And she kind of laughed and said, yeah, you and everybody else, you know? And um, she said, yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens, but it wasn't something we were actively pursuing. And um, I was doing a Facebook party for the Christmas note the year it came out. And I was so excited about it. It had that military angle to it. And I grew up in Norfolk, Virginia Beach area, which is a huge military town. So I loved the premise of the movie. And um, I was tweeting about it for people to come and watch it with me on Facebook. And the Christmas note tweeted me back and they said, oh gosh, thanks for building buzz about the movie. And I was like, oh, you're so welcome. I love Hallmark. Well, then a week later, they direct messaged me and said, we didn't realize you were an author. Maybe one day one of your books will be a movie. And of course my heart like stopped. And I was like, oh, and I just said, a girl can dream. And I left it at that. I wasn't going to get my hopes up. But a week later, my um, agent got a call asking for the manuscript for Christmas Joy. And the funny thing is I had turned in that manuscript in May. And it was the following January when they asked for the manuscript and my editor and I hadn't even finished editing it yet, hadn't started editing it yet. So my agent got my editor and I together, we edited it really quick, got it in while they were hot and asking for it. And a few months later, they optioned it. And I, I mean, I could have just fallen out of my chair. I was so excited. And uh, my agent was like, well, Nancy, calm down tons of books get optioned it's rare that they ever become a movie and I was like but maybe <laughs> and I'm one of those uh, glass half full girls so I was not letting go of that dream and um, so then they ended up optioning Hope at Christmas and um, it wasn't until the following February um, on Valentine's Day that I got the call that they were getting ready to put Christmas Joy into production and I headed up to Vancouver to watch it be on set it was so exciting it was the it kind of took the uh, wind out of all the effort that my uh, my now husband had put into that Valentine's Day because <laughs> it was just it's hard to beat that news um, but I'll never forget it and we we toasted uh, to Valentine's Day into the book becoming a movie that night it was it was amazing I'll never forget it wow that that is crazy the power of social media you just that connection and they direct message you I mean who would have thought you just one like little message or shout out what it would turn into right well yeah and you know it's funny because when I talked to the gal that put the movie in production she didn't know anything about that tweet or any of that stuff and she said she actually saw it in Barnes and Noble so I guess it was kind of you know, it got optioned from one end and then she saw it and they had it and it became a movie. So you just never know what's going to work. I always tell everybody, because everybody wants to know, how do I get a Hallmark movie? I say, be genuine, be yourself and just keep saying your prayers. <laughs> and hopefully something wonderful will happen. <laughs> That's amazing advice. It's probably the best advice you could give. That's great. And I am curious, do you have a personal favorite Hallmark Channel movie or favorite Hallmark Channel actors? My favorite Hallmark Channel movie is the Christmas ornament. And Kelly Martin and Cameron. Oh, now I just lost his last name. Just Cameron. Cameron uh, Matheson. <laughs> Matheson. Is that, yeah. Matheson. <laughs> like I even sat and I met him everything. Um, they, they star in it and I absolutely adore that movie. And, you know, it came out, I, I became a widow in 2014 and it came out that year, I believe. And um, she, Kelly Martin just did an amazing job with the emotion and you know, the tentative feelings that she had and still trying to follow her dreams. It is just a beautiful movie. I have it on DVD. I recommend it to everybody. And um, I was at a, a Hallmark party and she and her husband were standing behind me and I was able to turn to her and introduce myself and tell her how much that movie meant to me. And, um, you know, just it, it was amazing. It was a really neat moment because I just that movie gave me a lot of strength when I needed it. So, uh, yeah, it was, that's my favorite one. And, you know, my favorite actress or actor Gosh, that is so hard. I, I really love Paul Green. I love, you know, I love them all. It's hard to pick one. <laughs> my really husband is. would make me pick Candace. My husband would make me pick, uh, pick Candace Cameron Bure because, you know, he, he absolutely loves her. And if I didn't pick her, then he would be really sad. And I love 
the person that she is. Absolutely. But um, it'd be hard to say you had one favorite actress or actor. Um, they all are amazing. And Erin Cahill has become kind of extra special to me. Um, you know, she and I exchanged some notes when she starred in The Secret Ingredient. And I just think she knocked that part out of the ballpark. I mean, I, I just had no idea that she was going to fit that role so perfectly. And um, it, we had sent a couple notes back and forth about the movie. And, you know, she talked, you know, thanked me for writing the book, stuff like that, just little chit chat stuff. And it was really fun. And then um, when I wrote The Shell Collector, which just came out last month, I had sent her an early copy and asked her if she wanted to read it and leave me a um, you know, a, an acknowledge or a, a blurb for it. And she did. And it was a beautiful story. And um, she sent me this beautiful blurb for the story. And uh, it turned out that she does voiceover or narration for books. And uh, Waterbrook Press ended up picking up Aaron to do the narration for the shell collector. And I was so excited because, you know, I've got, I think I have 32 books out now. Most of my books are in audio as well, but because I'm Southern, they always pick these Southern women. They're like really breathy. <laughs> And I, they don't talk like I talk. Well, Erin is actually from Virginia, you know, from where I'm from. And I just love her voice. And it is the best narration of any of the books that I've written. I just love it. She just really shines. And anybody that adores her work on Hallmark as much as I do should grab that and, and listen to it. It is just amazing. I am really glad you shared that because I personally, I love listening to audiobooks. I They're just so fun. And I a lot of it, it comes down to the performer who's voicing it. And she really, I'm sure she does a great job. She's She just has like a such unique quality about her. And I will absolutely be listening to that audiobook. The Shell Collector, don't forget to check that book out as well. And is there a plan for this to be made into a Hallmark movie? Do you know? Not yet, but I sure hope so. It would be the perfect Hallmark movie. You know, it's set in a small town, small beach town, similar to Sand Dollar Cove. Um, and it, uh, it, it involves an, an older widow, 81 years old, who walks the beach every day collecting sea glass and seashells. And then a, a young widow with two children, her husband passed away two years ago, and they're still trying to get on their feet. She's just moved there. And she starts finding these shells with messages in them um, that give her inspiration. And she and Maeve uh, become really good friends and really bolster each other through difficult times in their lives. And of course, there's also a, a little romance towards the end, but it is a beautiful story. And the, the inscriptions in the shells are just breathtaking. And it, it actually, that was inspired by a real story. A, a friend of my family lives out in the Outer Banks, Kitty Hawk, and she had been walking down the beach and she had something heavy on her heart and she was kicking through the surf and kicked up the shell, went to pick it up and it had um, a scripture written in it. And it was a scripture that made her feel you know, the strength that she needed for what she was going through. And over six years, she found like four shells altogether. No one else had ever found anything with a scripture or a note or anything written in it. And so she felt like they were her uh, shells from her angels by the sea. And hearing that story, just, you know, I, my mind went crazy. You know? <laughs> and uh, that's how the shell collector became a story. So it's really special to me. And, um, you know, with the, the older widow and the young widow, that was a really special story for me too, having been widowed in 2014 and going through that journey. And, you know, it's something that changes and, you know, the, the rough edges become softer and, but, you know, you have to unbraid yourself from who you were as a couple for, you know, 25 years and start realizing who you are again. And um, it's, a, it's a hard journey. So I was really hoping that, you know, I would bring a lot of, you know, hope and joy and confidence to, you know, other women who are going through it or who will go through it. Um, so yeah, it's super special book to me. Wow. I, I love that storyline. It's so unique and it's, it's so neat that it's based off of like a true event. It's like, I don't know if you've heard of, um, the God wink movies on Hallmark, but yes, it yes, sounds I love like that. those movies. Yes. Oh. Yeah. They're great movies. I was just going to say, aside from the, um, the movies that were made from my books, I wrote books for Hallmark movies. So the uh, first three Christmas and Evergreen books um, are all written by me. Um, Hallmark contacted me, I guess it was right after Christmas, Dwayne Hope at Christmas had aired. And they contacted me and asked me if I would like to do the novelization of Christmas and Evergreen. And of course, I hadn't seen the movie yet. It hadn't come out. Didn't even know what it was about. 
And when I got it, I was so excited because it's so right up my alley. You know, it's small town country. You know, I used to do stuff with the 4 So, you know, the cow and the veterinarian, all that stuff was stuff that you know I've lived. So it was such a good fit. And I loved writing Christmas and Evergreen, Christmas and Evergreen Letters to Santa and Christmas and Evergreen Tidings of Joy. All three of those, um, I got to be the voice for them. And I just loved it. And it was such a great lesson for me too, on, you know, the difference between writing and screenplays. Um, so it was huge education, um, which was kind of like the, the bonus on top. <laughs> wow. That's really cool. I'm so glad you shared that, that now more books for people to pick up and kind of just get to learn your style more and your voice as an author. What a neat opportunity for you. You are just really having a great time with the Hallmark channel. Oh my gosh. Yes, I am. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. I love them. Oh, well, I, I'm sure it sounds like they love you. So that is a great partnership. And before we finish up, I want people to be able to follow along with all the many things you're doing. What are your social media handles and what's your website? My website is nancynagel.com and Nagel has that I in the middle, N-A-I-G-L-E. Um, I'm also on Twitter, Instagram, and I create a Pinterest page for every book that I write while I'm writing it. So some of this stuff doesn't end up in the book, but if I'm like right now, I'm working on What Remains True and The Wedding Ranch. Uh, they'll both come out in 2022 but you can actually go see on the Pinterest board what I'm plucking out there to get some sneak peeks into what the story might be about. But there are also plenty of uh, pictures from all the other books that I've written. So that's a lot of fun. And hopefully I'll be back on Facebook soon. <laughs> we might need a petition to get me back on. <laughs> and Erin Cahill can my, uh... spearhead that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but that'd be great. <laughs> oh my goodness. Wow. That is so cool. Well, I guess people could go to your Pinterest page and look at a board for Sand Dollar Cove. Is that right? Yeah, they absolutely can. Oh, cool. And, um, you know, please visit nancynagel.com. You can grab my newsletter. You can uh, read a free excerpt of my newest book, The Shell Collector. And uh, there's a link there to get to the audio book. And there's a great sample of the audio book if you want to take a listen and uh, let me prove to you how wonderful a narrator Erin Cahill is, Jack of Many Trades or Jill of Many Trades. Um, so, and she even sh shared a couple pictures when uh, she was actually doing the recording. That was really fun. <laughs> Oh, wow. That's awesome. Well, I will absolutely include all of the links in the show notes so people can follow along. It's been so great talking with you. Congratulations on all of your success. And I cannot wait for everyone to see Sand Dollar Cove when it airs on June 26th. Well, thank you. And I hope people will drop me a note. Let me know. You like the book better, the movie better? Couldn't live without them both. I'm probably thinking it's going to be the answer because <laughs> I've never met a Hallmark movie I didn't like. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. Well, you have been a great guest. I am so glad that I got to talk with you. Thank you for visiting with me. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you again. Thank you. You too. Bye. Thank you guys so much for listening to this interview. I hope you enjoyed it and had fun learning a little bit about where the story inspiration came from for Sand Dollar Cove. Be sure to check out Nancy's website and follow her on all of her social media accounts. Of course, I will include the links to these in the show notes. And please tune in next Saturday, June 26th, as I live tweet Sand Dollar Cove. We are going to have a great time watching these two stars, Chad Michael Murray and Ali Mashaka, have just a beautiful little love story on a coastal beach town. Don't forget to subscribe to this podcast if you like it. And until next time, have an awesome day. Thank you so much for listening to Hallmark Happenings.